Hey there fiddlers, for this week's old time fiddle class, we're going back to some North Carolina fiddling, some Tommy Gerald fiddling. Uh, this is a great old classic fiddle tune called Let Me Fall. very short little musical segment actually it's only about eight bars long sort of repeated over and over in different octaves uh, but we're going to be focusing in on some of the tricky bow stuff that really gives uh, this round peak style its flavor and um, it should be a good little study for us so let's get into it Okay, so as I said before, it is only eight bars of music, so pretty simple melodically, but there's a ton we can dive into with the bowing on this one. Um, and there's also a few little sort of variations I want to look at. Um, the melody is pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time sort of breaking down the melody. Uh, instead, we're just going to sort of dive into the bow stuff. Um, I'll play it to you slowly. I am in cross A, so my G string and my D string are tuned up a tone. So We've got A, E, and then A, E. It can be a little fraught sometimes tuning your fiddle up a tone like that. You've got to be careful just to sort of bring your strings up to those notes and try not to go over um, where you can break a string. And so sometimes it's easier to actually go down. So instead of tuning your, D, your G and your D string up a tone, you tune your and your E string down a tone. So you can do that if you sort of don't want to risk um, tuning your fiddle up. But there is a nice sort of tension to this tuning um, that, that gives, a, you know, the style a, a, a really bright sound and um, a sort of t intensity, yeah. Let me slow it down for you. I'm gonna try and play this a couple times around nice and slowly, and then we're gonna dive into the bowing. Okay. One, two, three. Thank you. 
So hopefully you were able to sort of see some of the, the bowings in motion there a little clearer as I played it slowly. Um, so the tune is in the key of A, obviously we're in uh, cross A. We're basically just using notes from the major scale. Which in our open tuning is exactly the same fingering all the way across the violin, which is a bit of fun. We just have to, if we do it from when we get to our second finger on the D string, that's when we change to the open A or straight to our first finger. Uh, that's the only sort of <laughs> little bit of getting used to that you have to do um, when you're in this cross tuning is that your third finger on the D string is the unison rather than your fourth finger. Let's uh, break down some of these bowings. So a lot of um, what's going on in this tune is um, we have sort of a combination of these, what I call sort of like circle bows and sort of figure eight bows. Circle bows is just when we're introducing like an up and down motion um, along with our side to side motion, right? So instead of just side to side, we're also going up and down. And that means that as we're going uh, down bow, we sort of like have a little bit of a down curve to it. And as we're going up bow, we have an up curve. And that sort of means that this heel of our bow is kind of doing a little bit of a circle. Um, you can visualize that. Some people like to think about these shapes and some people think it's all a bit of a joke. So, um, you know, I'm just explaining this. If this is helpful to you, it's a little bit helpful to me. So. Um, this is helpful to you, take it. And if not, some people say, just move your bow up and down um, <laughs> at the same time, you know, so it doesn't have to be that complex. I can really visualize a little circle there. So those are our circle bows. And let me just play the little musical phrase and we'll see when that happens. kind of um, separate bows um, but instead of kind of just doing it in that sort of like very straight up and down way where we have that little circle motion going on and it gives us that kind of interesting little rhythmic moment um, when we start introducing the figure of eight little idea, um, this is when we start um, slurring. Instead of um, taking all of our sort of like bow strokes in separate up and down motions, when we add two uh, notes together in a slur, Normally that would just kind of result in a longer bow. So instead of one, two, three, four, we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like this. So instead of just every single subdivision being a separate bow stroke, we've got two subdivisions um, coming in either like one, two, separate, separate, one, two, separate, separate, like that, or maybe just all together, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. As we introduce the down up motion, along with that, our, the heel of our bow is gonna sort of start tracking this little eight, figure eight movement. So it kind of looks a little like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got two beats or two counts to a bow. And now, instead of a circle, we have a figure of eight. So the trick to this, when we do it slowly, I always teach people sort of crossing the strings between the E and the A, is that we're going to go on a down bow, we're going to E to A, 
And on the up bow, we also go E to A. A lot of people sort of get confused. They end up going E, A, A, E, right? But it's E, A, and then on the change of the bow direction, now on an up bow, we have E, A again. Or if we're sort of on the A string, we're just sort of grabbing the E on the way down, back, and then on the way up, in our up bow direction, we're also just grabbing the E on the front end of the note, right? That makes our kind of figure eight bowing. So, all right. Most of what is happening in this tune is kind of a combination of circles and figure eights. Um, obviously, it's kind of confusing sometimes to think about it in that way, but I think that like learning the components and thinking about that just separately is kind of helpful, thinking about those, um, those little shapes that we're making. Once we put that into the tune, I think it can be a little confusing to try and think about where is the figure eight, where is the circle, and da 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 da. Um, but hopefully that'll help you sort of get the feel under your bow and then we can kind of put everything together and it'll make a little more sense um, just naturally. Okay, so if we've got circles and then we add a, a longer bow and there, right, then we sort of end up doing the E strings on the up bow and now we're on the down bow. So I'm sort of going from one end of the figure eight doing circles and then I add a longer bow then we're at the other end of the figure eight and we're doing circles. So we're at the bottom of the figure eight doing circles and then add a longer one there, we're on the up bow and down. One, two. One, two. So what I'm doing is I've got this figure of eight. You can kind of imagine it like this. I'm going circle, 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 and then circle, 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 like this. Um, that happens quite a bit in this. So There's sort of moments where we end up and we're just kind of like doing circles down here and then we're doing circles up here. Um, and of course, like I always think, you know, there's not one way to play this. I'm trying to get this as close as I can to the way that Tommy Jarrell was playing it. But if you've got your own way around it and it does include some of those m movements and it has that sort of spirit with your own combination of ups and downs and circles and figure eights, um, that's totally fine. Practice this bow rhythm with me. Very slowly this is. So we've got down. So we're, we're sort of long bow and then we're going around the figure eight doing a couple of circles at the top and then back to the bottom <laughs> you don't want to think about the shapes just think about that rhythm with, with no rocking it's kind of da, 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 da. So get that rhythm going. So our first couple of phrases kind of have that rhythm going on. Okay, let me break this down into a few different phrases and show you what I'm doing with the bow. Um, the first phrase we're gonna do is. All right, 
without the, the fingers. That's our rhythm. So. Okay, once we get to that D chord, this is our second phrase. Just that much. Without any notes. So we have down, up, rock, up. Up, rock, separate. Third phrase. All right, it's going to start out with some separate and then end with that little, what I sometimes call a scoop. All right, so without any fingers, we have that sort of circle motion. Okay, then our fourth phrase, our ending. Without any fingers. Okay, so it starts out with that circle idea again. Alright, so we've got down, up, down, up, down, up. Down and rock. And then we've got that ending phrase, which is. Right? That's that rhythm that we were practicing before. So those are our sort of all of the phrases combined. Now there's a few little um, variations we can do on parts of that. At this point here, we can try and do some figure eight bows. So, so it's separate, separate, and then slowed. So we can do that all separate, right? Or we can do it separate, separate, slow, slow, um, which kind of gives us more that figure eight moment. So separate, separate, figure eight. And the same sort of moment there we can do which is more of a figure eight sort of vibe, like those, we're slurring those notes in twos, one and two and three and four and, or with the circles kind of separate bows. Um, and also the ending can kind of change sometimes. So we can do this rhythm at the end. Or we can do, there's one that I quite like that he does, that Tommy Gerald does at the end when he's in the lower octave. All right, that's a really cool kind of um, syncopated um, rhythm that is gonna like really hit when we hit that. So it's one, two, three, one, two. So one and two and three and one, two, three. Out. Practice that rhythm with me. So it's one. Um, 
don't really know how to explain it. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that, I think, if we wanted to count it out. As with everything that I'm sort of explaining, sometimes, like I'm unsure, sometimes it can be helpful stuff for certain people. Sometimes it might be just really more confusing for you. So, you know, if you don't understand the circles and figure eights and all of that, um, just forget it and, um, you know, just concentrate on kind of hearing those rhythms and uh, trying to emulate it as best you can. There's no right or wrong way to kind of understand this, in my opinion. Um, okay, well, I think we've kind of gone over it as best we can. Um, make sure that you learn it both uh, in the higher octave and in the lower octave. So it's all the same fingering, basically. The only difference is when we're in the lower octave, we don't get the... Right? We can't get that lower note. So we just kind of stick to the first finger on the G string, which is now the A, right? So... we do of course is just try and play it along together this is really how some of these bowing things start to click is you have to play along to someone um, who has the feel that you want to get so play along with me now I'm gonna play it nice and slowly and I just want you to kind of like go with it um, play the bowings that come to you naturally have you know, the sound of Tommy Gerald's playing in, you, in your mind and listen to what I'm doing, uh, which is <laughs> my best imitation. And, um, you know, just kind of like hear those rhythms and, and, and um, try to sort of bring them out in your own playing. And I guarantee you that some things will really click. So let's play it together. Okay. I'm gonna to count to three and that's when we start the intro. One, two, month.